find yourself in a slippery rock region. Certainly if you find yourself driving along the 108, either from 79 Junction into Slippery Rock or from Slippery Rock to the Grove City Outlets, you're going to at one point or another be passing over Wolf Creek. And Wolf Creek in the area is known uh, particularly among fly fishermen and I have today two stories of Wolf Creek. This is in large part because here with me today is uh, a man we'll call Bond. It, it is his name, though. It is his middle name. His first name is actually Brendan, but let's be honest with one another, just between you and I, uh, Bond is a, it's, it's a sexier name. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, Bond is actually the guy who's responsible for the recording of the music and actually the creation of a lot of the original music that's used on this. He also uh, produces this show, and we've been trying to get him in front of the microphone for a little while be uh, a lot of it due to the extreme guilt I feel with him being so responsible for the quality uh, that you hear as, as well as motivating me to do this in the first place but the main reason we're doing this show is because Brennan was actually out fishing on Wolf Creek and usually uh, we're, we're doing this together fly fishing along the banks but I wasn't going to go out today because the unseasonable heat. I'm much uh, better off when it is minus 10 degrees out and I'm standing in the middle of the creek than when it's anything above 80. I just I can't deal with it. Regardless, he comes here today and he has got uh, quite the pulse-pounding story. And this is two two stories we have of the creek. So I, I, I'm going to start. We're going to start with Bond's story of earlier this morning. Dear listeners, Dr. Pennsylvania. Okay, so you're you're at Wolf Creek just earlier today. What what time did you go out, by the way? Uh, this was about uh, eight thirty in the morning. I got there about eight, but by the, by the time I actually got geared up and uh, in the water uh, in, itself, in, in, in the water, it was closer to uh, eight thirty. And uh, yeah, it was definitely hot out today, but at that point, it was probably only in like the mid seventies. Mm-hmm. You know, it dipped down in the sixties last night, so the water temper- temperature was actually. Uh, Pretty decent for, for fishing. And Wolf so. Creek, where you're at too, it's 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 kind of nestled in a holler there. And in fact, one one of the banks really is is much nothing more than a cliff face for a while. So it stays pretty shady down there for a good while of the day, at least. Yeah, it really does. And um, it's one of those creeks that, um, if any of our listeners are familiar with it, it also kind of uh, juts up against. There's basically cliff face almost on your left hand side. On the right-hand side is actually like a natural use area. There's lots of little uh, trails back there and like geocaches and... Um, and it's being monitored in part by the University of Slippery Rock, if I'm not mistaken, for yes. uh, natural purposes. Yes, part, part of it is, is, is washed over by the, by the Slippery Rock, but there's also, I believe, a private trust right. that, that regulates it. So it, full, so it still falls under like all our normal fish and game regulations. But the actual land is like I think it's technically privately owned, but for public use. Okay. So it's a really nice little, little area. Okay. So anyway, um, when you came here, you were really excited earlier to to tell me this story. So we've set the stage. Um, you're in the middle of the creek at one point, and tell tell us the first thing you see. So I'm in the middle of the creek, and uh, I'd probably been in that 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 section for probably about 15, 20 minutes at this point, and I hear this splash uh, near me. It certainly was not a fish. Fish tend to stay away from me when I'm fishing. I found that to yeah, be true it, <laughs> with myself. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, I heard this large, large splash, and at first I thought it was either a, a dog, because people do bring dogs up there. Um, it's not completely uncommon to see a dog or even a coyote or a wolf. Well, and, and I should add, too, that like every time we go out, and in this area in particular, we've been encouraged by a lot of the uh, numbers that are coming back. A lot of people are familiar with, 
that the bald eagles are, are really coming back into the area. And actually, it was only like four years ago that I saw one in the wild for the first time in my life. But also between you and I, we've seen numerous black bear. I, I know last mm-hmm. winter you and I had saw minks and mm-hmm. beavers together mm-hmm. too, mm-hmm. And, and even freshwater uh, clams. Mm-hmm. Just a lot of things are coming back, and it's really encouraging. So, so you, you yeah, and it's and it's it, it's a, it, it really is kind of amazing because you think like oh the wild is something that is like out there, but it doesn't take you, you, like I was at this point only I'd say what maybe quarter of a mile half mile off of you know you're, a, you're, a rural road but still a road yeah it, it, you, you know? really are only five five to yeah. seven minutes at the most mm-hmm. drive from like Main Street from the campus yeah, of exactly. Slippery Rock University. Mm-hmm. I hear this large splash, and I turn to my right, and there's a, uh, like I said, I'm in the water, there's a small pool in front of me, a bend to the right, and coming down off of, like, a little bank hill on the right-hand side of me, probably about 20, 25 yards, is this adolescent or yearling black bear. Plunges into the water, comes right back up, walks over to the little island that's kind of in the middle, hits, like what me and Nick have said, which is a pretty steep hill, and just starts right up the hill, not climbing. Yeah, not, not 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 climb up the hill, but just up the hill. You know, kind of making his way. It why it scared the heck out of me at first. When I first looked, I thought it was like a wolf or a dog or something. And then when you make you kind of make that realization, like, oh, that's a bear. I'm watching it, and I'm like, mom, I'm like, man, that's just amazing how like how quickly across the stream and how easily it's kind of like making its way up the. Just hill. like it's it's encountering no barriers, yeah. no obstacles to yes. slow it down. It yeah. just continuous exactly pace. yeah it's yeah it was just it was really something incredible Unheated. and it's it, it i shouldn't say it scared the heck out of me it's it's it, it really just surprised me because again like that area is used pretty frequently by a lot of people you don't think of there as being bears there that typically you know right. like you wouldn't think there'd be somewhere they were they were kind of moving through just because of all the other sounds and smells and everything but because i was downwind from him I don't think that that bear ever actually saw me. You know, he never made eye contact, never looked, and just went along his his his. his and, and you, were, you said you were like 25, 25 35 yards yes. too. So it wasn't it wasn't like he was right up on you. No, no, we were not. He was not encroaching on me or me on him. Thankfully, but it's something to see. And this might not sound again. I said this was kind of a pulse pounding story. This is not that part of it, unless you're just really thrilled by the thought of bears. But not but uh, a few minutes later. How how, how long was, was it I, when the, when the second know, encounter? You, you comes know, it's by? it's weird because I would like to, like in reality it was probably only thirty seconds later, but it, but it felt like a few minutes later because I'm like I said I'm watching the bear cross and go up, and that's like that's where my attention is is at this time. Um, right. Is on, is on the bear that is in front of me. But as... The, as yeah, usually usually when one's uh, having to deal with one bear and like keep keep notice of it, you're not usually... There's not usually a, a few of them. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, oh, there is the bear that is that is my focal point. But right now, now there's a second bear. Then a, a second bear enters the story. This bear was a adult, what I imagine was an adult female. I didn't ask her name. <laughs> so I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> but uh, she comes out on the bank behind me, I'd say probably not even 10 yards away. The way I, the way I described it with Nick earlier was she was about two rod lengths, which I'm using a nine and a half foot rod. Right. So we're, lo- we're looking at like 20 feet, maybe just uh, just a little over 20 feet. Yeah. It was, it was, it was close enough that it was um, very startling to see uh, a bear of that size that close. Cause I've, I mean, I like, we have both seen bear before, Right, but and, typically it's like the fir- like that first encounter a few moments prior. Right, and the closest I've gotten is yeah, probably mm-hmm. about fifteen twenty yards away. Yeah, and I tell people a lot because um, with again with the numbers, particularly black bear numbers uh, in central Pennsylvania, we're out here right now in central Butler County, but uh, out in Catanning, out in mm-hmm. Indiana, uh, even out I was out in Johnstown talking mm-hmm. to some people um, just outside of Johnstown and like towns like Armagh and whatnot, their numbers are, are coming back in such a big way that um, I know about a month and a half ago there was a black bear that was walking around the city of Butler I believe it. and you know I, I was I was having a conversation with some people and I said you know I come across black bears these black bear quite a bit when I'm out fishing and usually I, I like to go up to Venango, Crawford County, places like that and I've described them to people as being like kind of big dumb dogs. You're not 
when you see one, it's not good to initially freak out because they're gonna usually they leave yes. you alone. But this thing's almost like shoulder to shoulder. This thing is real close. With you. Yeah, and like I said, like the, the the first one, I'd probably put like I said, I think it was a yearling or an adolescent. I'd probably put it in the ballpark of a hundred pounds, like still a large animal, but not a intimi- right. not an intimidating animal. And again, it was more of like I'm like at this point, I'm like feeling like a naturalist. I'm like, oh, I'm out here fly fishing, and I see there's this beautiful bear. Right. This is this and is then, what it's all about. So yeah, exactly. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm really I'm really in it. Uh, but uh, then then this other one shows up, and it's like, oh, now I'm just another mammal <laughs> kind of thing at this point. But so so the, so the bear steps into the water and starts to kind of cross. And the whole time, this thing is looking at me. Never once, though, did it... It, it didn't stop. Much of like the other one didn't stop. Yeah. It, it looked at... This one looked at me. It never stopped, though. Never made any intimidating noises, grunts, any of those kind of things. Um, crossed, you know, in front of me, basically. You know, never never getting any closer than those 20 feet. But, but, but being 20 feet pretty much the whole time has kind of arced around me. And then walked over to the hillside where the other one had went up and followed up closely afterwards like meanwhile as this whole thing is happening i have not moved yeah i've not moved i have and it's not out of playing it cool it's like almost like a shock right? yeah like because like, that's the thing like at first it was oh i need to i need to not move because i don't want to startle this this young bear you know uh but then whenever the second one showed up again like it's 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 almost kind of strange to say because like i don't want to say i was in shock or like terrified or anything. Yeah. But you immediately feel the gravity of the situation. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, and like I didn't like freak out or anything, thankfully. Because that's the thing is I feel like if I would have suddenly decided to hay bear, you know, this thing, that right. might and, and and just just so people know, like if you do encounter a bear in in the wild, um one of the things if it's get if it's a good distance away, just kind of play cool. But if it's kind of approaching you, what you're encouraged to do and This is what you're told at Road Signs, but also a good friend of ours is a wildlife officer over in the state of Ohio, just a few counties Mm -hmm. over, and apparently what they teach cadets over there is to slowly raise your arms and stand up tall and straight and softly, calmly go, whoa, bear. But you don't even want to do that because, like, it is, like, it is too close, right? It's like in your... Personal yeah, space. It, re- it really, really is. And um, I, don't, I don't like my friends close to the 20 feet sometimes. <laughs> and uh, it was it was weird because, like I said, it never made any... It did not do one thing to, like, intimidate me or make me feel threatened. It just kind of went along. It's, it, just, it just kind of was doing its thing, and I just happened to be part of a thing it saw that day. Now, one of the things my father said, apparently bears will, with, like, yearling cubs, they stay with them for two years. And like I said, this bear was not that was not that big, but it was not a cub, so I think it kind of fell into that category. And I guess during that time, they kind of learned to give uh, their offspring kind of more and more space before kind of kicking them out, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wonder if that wasn't part of what might have happened with the situation with me today, because I mean, as we're recording this, it's beginning of September, um, so they're not really getting into hibernation mode yet. They're not fat- right. they're not trying to fat themselves up. And with all the food around here, which actually I just learned, do you, do you know acorns, beech nuts, all like different nuts are called mast? No, I didn't. Yeah, know so that. like there's lots of what's called mast around right now. So, you know, they're mainly herbivores. So um, I think the bear probably just saw me, wasn't quite sure what I was because of all the. Like you said, you had, the, you had sense on, not. not yeah, the well, dumb. I, I had lots of. Um, I had DEET on me to keep like ticks off and everything, I had sunscreen. I just smoked a cigarette previously, um, so it's very possible. And again, like I'm in waist deep water right now, which is a very vulnerable position to be when you realize, oh, if I need to move quickly, right? Not really moving very quickly. Um, so I think the bear almost didn't partially, maybe didn't know what to think of me. And I mean, like I said, like, because I was not moving, I don't think I w- could have come off as threatening, yeah, or anything. I think that if I would have freaked out, that would have been an issue. And like and like Nick was saying earlier, uh, he's usually with me, and if it's not him, it's usually one of our other friends that fly fish. And something he brought up that I hadn't even thought about is what would have happened if someone else would have been there with me. Right. This could have been a tragedy that you know could have been averted. It was a very exciting 
experience. I'm, I'm really glad it happened, but I'm even more glad the bear did not care that I was there. I'm glad this is a much bigger deal for me than it was for that bear. <laughs> I think is probably the moral. Oh, and, story. and you're like you're probably you're probably glad it happened, but aren't really excited to have that same experience again with it being that close. No, no, yeah, I'd, I'd much rather see them across the wood line or right. uh, you know. Uh, in more conventional means of nature, obviously. So that just happened uh, first week of September mm-hmm. 2015. Well, you might remember uh, you and I were actually together uh, at Wolf Creek not even a year ago we're talking early mid spring when it's finally starting to get up into the upper mid mid 70s upper 70s uh, at the highest point of the day there's three poisonous snakes in pennsylvania two are are pretty uh well known the timber rattlesnake and the copperhead a lot of people tend to think that the cotton mouths are around here too but that's that's not actually the case we do have a northern water snake which is kind of looks similar it, it mm-hmm. can be mistaken and they are absolute jerks they they're not poisonous but they're but, threatening yeah they, they're threatening because they're not they're not particularly well known for their uh, friendly disposition and my understanding too is that their saliva does contain an anticoagulant, so they they'll bite repeatedly and you will bleed. And you'll bleed like crazy. Mm. Never had to deal with one, although there's a stream that runs right by my house and I see them there quite a bit. Anyhow, uh, one the third poisonous snake that we have in Pennsylvania is only really known population is here in Butler County. I, I believe Butler and Lawrence County, but I know we have a confirmed population in Butler County mm-hmm. out by Wolf Creek. Uh, there's the Jennings Environmental Center, which is maintained in part by the Slippery Rock University. In fact, we had a bridge project that had to be put on hold along Route 8 mm-hmm. because of Massasauqua rattlesnakes. That's the third poisonous snake in the commonwealth of pennsylvania is the eastern mazasagua brendan it was just you and i i believe or it was mm-hmm. you and i and our, our friend matt yeah um and again uh vaughn not i'm gonna have to i, I prefer <laughs> anyhow anyway <laughs> the it, it's at least the two of us maybe one other friend with us this is um again that time of the year when we just start getting warm days and the snakes are starting to come out of hibernation and as when Brendan set the stage earlier, he mentioned how one side of the creek is really a cliff face. And it really, either side is pretty steep hill once you get out a, a little bit. I'm standing towards the middle where there's a, a rise in, in uh, the elevation of the, of the creek bed. And I'm, I'm only like knee deep, a little less than knee deep, standing on a little kind of shoal and, and throwing out to the bank towards the cliff face where there's a lot of overhanging trees and, and trout in particular will kind of nestle. And that's where the water changes too because all of a sudden the swifter current comes up against the rock face and it slows down. And if fish like anything, they like changes. And you so you're always looking for any change in the water and you kind of throw according to that. But because there's those trees there, and because we're in Pennsylvania, I, I get very quickly, I get a fly stuck in the tree and I'm trying to kind of roll it out a couple times and it's only confounding the situation. So I, I give up on the spot and I kind of wade over. I'm nearly waist deep now and I, I pull the branch down and as I pull the branch down I'm starting to kind of unwind my line I kind of get my hook out of wherever it's in I hear the dry husk <laughs> rattle <laughs> and I've never I've, I've never come across a rattlesnake in the wild despite like I've got a fly fishing camp up in Potter County and I spend a lot of time in that area of north central Pennsylvania um, affectionately known as the Ridge Runner area and my dad grew up in that region and he said well he told me and this is true that if they be playing football 
a team like Countersport High School, people would be sent onto the field to sweep for the mm-hmm. timber rattlesnakes. Mm-hmm. Back then, uh, they would have the rattlesnake hunts. There was actually a bounty on them. Mm-hmm. But also, my Uncle Tom, who's now passed, was, uh, out of Williamsport, the doctor on call for those rattlesnake hunts that they have uh, out in Potter County. Anyhow, despite all of this, I've never come across one in the wild. So when I hear that dry Husky, yeah. Even rattle. though, even though you've never come across one, there is the first time you do, there is no mistaking it. Yeah, there, it it just certainly was not. And I'm only a few feet from the cliff wall, and it's it's wedged in there somewhere. I can't see it. So what I do is I I slowly break off the bit of branch, and I start wading backwards, which is a weird like walking backwards is one thing. But wading backwards across stone uh, creek and especially bed. in waist deep water, like that's 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 a, that's a trend we have here. When you're in waist deep water, and you try and walk backwards, especially in western Pennsylvania. It's not it's it's not easy walking forward right. in creeks. <laughs> walking backwards is uh, it's it's challenging. Well, and and you're you're afraid because there are holes, and there was a there were a couple of kids, a couple of Amish kids. Um, mm-hmm. One or two of them drowned. This is this is only a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. when they were wading in one of the creeks in the area. One of the creeks that I believe the that Wolf Creek connects to, mm-hmm. and fell into a hole and could not That's swim. It. And and right, the clothes wear weigh you down. And anyhow, so I backed up. That was my first encounter with a rattlesnake. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get to see it because. I was excited after the fact because I'm like, oh my gosh, that could have been one of those rare eastern Mazasago rattlesnakes, and I really wish I had seen it. But I'm 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 glad it's it's one of yeah. those things. I'm really just like you said. I'm really glad no, I had I'm the right, encounter. I'm but. right there with you. D- d- have you ever heard my Mazasago story? Before you do, I, I I was just I was looking up on um, Pennsylvania paherps.com. <laughs> and actually, uh, the Mazasaco is is known verified populations in Butler, Mercer, and Venango counties. Although Lawrence uh, and in Crawford County also have traditional populations, although okay. there's no confirmed population at this time. But we really are on um, the very limit of, of their eastern range. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, w- I would think that it would not surprise me if they were in Lawrence County. Because right, it makes a, sense. Well, just because the, the topography of eastern Lawrence County is so similar to, to Butler in a lot of ways. Right, I so, agree with areas areas like McConnell's Mill, mm-hmm. um, places like that that people would be familiar with. Exactly, exactly. So any anyway, you you had another, to, just to go off on the Mazasaqua story, you have a quick Mazasaqua yeah, story. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because it's along the same lines. Um, so we actually had to have the game commission uh, come out to our house a few years ago. I don't think I've heard this. Because we actually found a, uh, about a six and a half foot long uh, shed, like, like snake skin. Right. Um, and we looked at it, like you could still see like all the patterns and everything. And when looking at the patterns, me and my, me and my father both knew right away that it was not a timber rattles- rattlesnake and it was not a uh, copperhead, which are still rare, but we, we still looked everything up and realized it wasn't, wasn't that. And as and as we're looking, this is the first time I'd heard of the Massasaqua. Right, and there, they really aren't very common. Not, the, the only other the, besides like talking to people, the only other information I've ever found that's not online is actually there's one small pamphlet you could get at Jennings Environmental Center on the Massasaqua, which I have in my car because <laughs> I thought it was interesting. But uh, so we actually had the game coach come out because they had to uh, basically set like like little like trap type things. There was basically like PVC pipe. Um, near some of the little streams by our house uh, because they figured, okay, well, if there was a shed here, then it's very likely that there might still be some around. Right. And we're, uh, my parents' house is right kind of buttressed up to um, some housing plans. Right, you're, you're in the woods, but it's it's a really weird area because it's a very mm-hmm. it's a very rural road. And in fact, it's it's the road on which the uh, cemetery from Night of Living Dead mm-hmm. is located. Mm-hmm. But yet, so it was never really developed like a lot of the region was and in large yeah. part because of the road conditions there mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's, it's not a very safe road yeah the, the the whole topography of that area is really as far as southwestern butler county goes is really strange 
Right. Um, with how <clears throat> with how the rock works and everything. But yeah, it's a strange little area, but they wanted to come out and test and see if they could trap any because they were worried that if there was a breeding population in that area, they were going to get into the housing plans and then you have to worry about them getting... Like, I mean, people would probably be worried about them getting small dogs and children, probably, but the game commission was more concerned about, like... Pesti- the numbers. Just, 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 some, just yeah. numbers, pesticides, all those kind of things. Because, I guess, I guess because this is such a small population, they want to protect what is out there. So I've, I've yet to actually see one in, in, in the wild, but we still have, this, have the shed skin. About, That's about cool that they house. let you keep that. Yeah. It was. It was cool, Yeah. Yeah, but it was it was it was large. So right, I, I well they get up they yeah. get up to forty inches. Mm-hmm. Um, that that's I, I'm sure there's some that get uh, beyond that mm-hmm. range. But yeah, mm-hmm. they're, they're, that's that's a common yeah. about eighteen to forty inches. Yeah. you know. Yeah. So so there's two uh, of wolves and snakes. Thank you.